All right, Paul, these black holes sound like a good idea theoretically, but as an observer, I like to see things before I believe them. Now, black holes by their very name seem to conjure up a problem. How on earth are you going to see something which no light can get out of? Yes, and astronomy is the ultimate non-contact sport. You can look, but you can't touch yes. for anything outside our own solar system. And how can you see something that doesn't emit any light? Or any radio waves, or any sort of waves. Even gravity waves couldn't get out of a black hole. Any sort of wave is going to be trapped in there. So how are you going to see these things? Well, one thing, when we looked at the spaghettification of myself, I would certainly be screaming as I got ripped apart like that. So if, okay, you can't hear me scream in space, but it does conjure up the idea that as I get ripped apart, if I were a star or something, I'd probably make a pretty interesting display. Yeah, and remember we saw that for the, the dwarf novae, um, that the light for the dwarf novae was coming not from the white dwarf, but from the mass that was spinning around it, getting faster and faster and radiating gravitational potential energy. So if something falls into a black hole, we talked about this in the quasar section of the first course, there's a lot of energy before it goes into the event horizon. Right, Going so from infinity out to two or three Schwarzschild radii out, you can liberate maybe 30% of the rest mass's speed. If it bumps into something else in there, you could perhaps radiate. Right, so you have like a star come by, it'll get ripped apart if it were to come by, then all the gas would probably collide with each other and want to radiate all that energy. As it radiates the energy, then it wants to get closer and closer. So you could imagine getting a big, that's probably a disk of material form around the thing that is going to get heated up from all the stuff colliding, radiate that gravitational energy away, and that should glow pretty brightly. Yep, so we can't see the black hole itself, but maybe we can see stuff swirling down its throat. Another possibility, though, um, if you remember in the exoplanets course, we couldn't see the exoplanets, but we worked out they were there by their effect by making the star wobble backwards and forwards. So maybe if there's a black hole around it, you'll see stars wobbling backwards and forwards or doing loop-the-loops or something around it, and we could tell that there was something dark and massive there. Ah, so I'd use the motion of the stars themselves to infer how much gravity is there. Okay, I could, that makes sense. Mm. Are we way the sun, for example, by the Earth's motion. Yeah, and in fact, it's a combination of these two things that leads to the, probably the best case study of a black hole. If you remember going back to X-ray astronomy, they found all these strange X-ray sources, and some of them turned out to be um, neutron star binaries. But one of the very earliest discovered ones, Cygnus X1, uh, turns out is not a neutron star binary, at least probably not. The star, just like the other binaries we talked about, we've got a star going loop-the-loops around something that emits X-rays, but it's going around rather faster, and the star is very massive. It probably weighs something like you know, 10 or even more solar masses. It's well, a this blue is super a giant, giant blue supergiant. So that's sort Not of like... Not small red stars like the other ones we were talking about. Okay, so that's a star like Rigel in the constellation of Orion. So that's a big 10 to 20 solar mass star that uh, is young and burning very brightly because it has a big nuclear reactor because it has so much mass to compress its interior so much. Yeah, and you can measure the Doppler effect of the star and you can see it's indeed moving back with the forms at a pretty high speed. So as we've done many times before in the series of courses, you can work out the mass of what it's going around. And that mass comes out as 10 to 20 solar masses. Okay. If because it was going around a neutron star, it actually wouldn't do because it's so massive, the neutron star would be going around it, it wouldn't be wobbling very much. So to have it wobbling as much as we see, it must be going around something that's pretty damn heavy. All right, so we have something that's 10 or 15 times the mass of the sun, yet seems to be very small. Now, neutron stars we know a bit about. We know they're made out of neutrons. We know that when you have a neutron star and you start adding material to it, it starts becoming smaller. It's yes, just like the white dwarfs do. That, so there's a rather strange situation that when you make them heavier, they get smaller. And so... We know that a neutron star, even if it's one and a half times the mass of the sun, is already only eight or nine kilometers across. And we know that's very close to a black hole. So if I make one 15 solar masses across, I think, given our understanding of neutrons, that that thing would be smaller than the Schwarzschild radius. And so it almost has to be a black hole if it's that heavy and small. Yeah, once it's that compressed that much, no matter what force is holding it up, it can't. It has to fall in. Yeah, okay. 
But we also know this thing is flickering in X-rays on timescales of even milliseconds, which also implies it's only light milliseconds across and therefore very small. So we seem to be looking at something that's very small and very massive. And that sounds like a black hole. Here's an artist's impression of it. Um, okay. We don't know for sure. Um, it's certainly consistent. We can't think of anything else that could have that mass, given our understanding of neutron stars. But maybe our understanding of neutron stars is deficient. Uh, People have been trying very hard to look at the X-rays coming from the central region and, and see if there's really conclusive proof that it is actually falling down a hole rather than bouncing off a surface. And it all seems to be consistent with that. Uh, there's probably some evidence there that it's actually falling into something, not just uh, hitting a surface. But it's very model dependent and not perhaps 100% sure, but probably 98% or 99%. But unfortunately, we can't go out and take a picture that looks just like this right now. Instead, we're relegated to an artist's impression of what we think it might look like. But I think the bets are in that we have a pretty good case for a black hole in this case.